Hi everybody, it's me, Dennis Woodruff. Thank you for tuning in on episode four of Masterclass. You know, I never wrote a book about my life, and they say somebody smart is going to make a movie about your life. It's going to be very entertaining and funny. If you look at all my movies, you'll see that my life has been very fruitful. It's been tough and today we're going to talk about survival in Hollywood whether you live here you come here uh, if you're not connected to rich wealthy famous people like Will Smith's son and Stallone's son and different people that have Schwarzenegger's son and uh, Tom Hanks they already have people their their parents are in the business and they kind of ride on their coattails I found out even Dustin Hoffman has, Jake has a son, Jake, that is trying to be an actor and has been very successful. I notice even in the music business, Ringo's son is a, is a, is a drummer and uh, it's very difficult. Um, also with my expertise, honestly, I don't want to do it. I have the knowledge to be the president of Paramount Universal. MGM, 20th, any of those studios that run an entire studio and or a TV station. I really have the foresight and knowledge and the instinct of what to do overall. And a lot of these clowns, they're just there for the money. They don't care about the business or the content, what they're putting out. They just want to make a lot of money. And I remember having times when I actually met and talked to um, Sherry Lansing. She used to run Paramount and a lot of people I've met, Ron Meyer at Universal, and they really respected me and my opinion. And a lot of people have said, Dennis is the new Charlie Chaplin in Hollywood. He does everything like Chaplin did. And I consider that a really fine comment. A lot of people will judge you and they don't even know you. They'll take you for face value. Also, I'm the first guy that used my cars for advertising. And now you see advertising on buses, bus stop benches, cars, billboards, all over. And I'm the one that started that whole art form. Now, let's get down to basic survival. If you come from out of state, you don't know how you're going to survive in Hollywood. I would recommend get a car that you could sleep in, like a van that runs good. You can always live on the street in a van in a commercial area. I did it myself. I used to have an old limousine at one time, and I blacked in the back windows and made it into a bed. And it really looked nice. It was an older style, but I actually slept in there, and I had, slept in there, and I had a TV in the back. And um, when you come to Hollywood, I bet I stayed in every flea bag hotel. I moved around a lot. I stayed in apartments, but I also stayed at friends' houses. You can't depend on that day, today. But I want you to know, even a studio apartment nowadays is 1500 a month. So you don't want to come here and spend every dollar and work part-time jobs just to cover your rent. Also the uh, the um, Airbnbs are very expensive and the youth hostels is a good way to do it. What I used to do is I go to UCLA or one of the colleges and I'd look on the housing board and I call people a lot of times people in the city will put up a room for rent and they'll let you if you're a student, get a really cheap room because they want to help you out. And you don't even have to necessarily be a student. One of my classes that I took at UCLA was a night class, so I only took one class a semester. But I learned a lot, and I used that to get into apartments. Um, also, a roommate is a good situation. Try to get somebody that's not crazy, party animal, and uh, I don't know, sometimes you could borrow money, 
uh, people like my stepdaddy really helped me out in a pinch. And when I'd run out of money, I rented a, on Federal Ave in West, West LA. And then I rented a little studio next to Paramount and they tore it down and made it into a uh, parking lot eventually. But that was a good little place. I painted the, the room black with red carpeting and a white round ball, Chinese at the top. And it was really cool and I had the, the, um, the walk-in closet was actually my little uh, office too. And I lived next door to the uh, uh, one of the hamburger stands I used to buy my food. And at one time when I lived in West, West LA, I went to uh, an all-American burger every day and got a hamburger, fries, and a Coke. And in those days, there was uh, um, ships, and it was in West LA. And then I moved up to Hollywood, and that's really, I spent a lot of time in Santa Monica, West LA, Westwood. But when I got to Hollywood, and I lived in my little apartment next to the studio, I did a lot of extra work. And extra work doesn't pay that well, and if you could get a calling agent, to call and set up uh, a lot of TV shows, movies, etc. They have background players, and you get paid from 40 to 120 a day, and they send you a check every week. If you can get with a good agency, you might be able to make, you know, you know, a couple hundred dollars a week or enough to survive, to pay your rent and food, and you get food on the set. So craft service is good because you can fill up on food and then they feed you, get one meal a day from the catering trucks. So extra work is a good way to uh, get your, survive and get your feet wet and uh, get on the set and don't be a problem. Do what you're told, listen to the assistant director and don't be a menace and don't bother people. You can watch everything that's going on. At one time, I used to stand behind the, uh, the monitors and watch the scenes as they were progressing when I could. You're not going to be in every scene, and don't try to hog the spotlight. If you get in a scene behind a big star, listen, do what you're told, and don't bother the main star. They don't want to talk to you. All you are is an extra. Your background, you're a prop. You're walking by in the back of the scene. But even that is a good way to get on the set and learn about the inner workings of the business. Sometimes I noticed I'd even get on the studio and during lunchtime, I might even go to the commissary and run into some people and talk to people. Always try to dress nicely, but be an actor, be yourself. Don't try to be something you're not. You don't have to have a big fancy car. I remember the most beat up car I had. I worked at Disney and they saw it in the parking lot. Actually, the windshield was smashed and it had my name on the side of it. And they felt so sorry for me. They knew I was struggling. When I lived in Burbank, they gave me a part on uh, a Mel Brooks TV show with Cloris Leachman and they bumped me up from a basic extra to a featured player. I also got a speaking part on uh, Quantum Leap. I, I'm in the episode and I still get residual checks of about $2 every six months from, I played uh, the right hand of God. I was the right hand of God. And then from doing that, nobody wanted to do it picking up the phone. Uh, the kid, the director, the son of Belisario, uh, said, hey, I've got a part here. We need to cast for a news, a news guy, uh, like a commentary in a news station. Would you do it? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, here's the script. Go practice your lines. And if you can do it, we'll give you the part. So. That's how I got my SAG card. I'm sagging after for, since 77. 
So sometimes when you're an extra, that's part of survival, you might get a speaking part. Don't count on it. And, uh, you know, you get a little you get a little fun and they send you to makeup. And in actuality, I was on the set when Leonardo DiCaprio got discovered as an extra. And uh, I saw him getting wheeled away to makeup and wardrobe and he was all excited. That was his first speaking part. And I don't remember which one it was, movie or TV show, but he was really excited and that made a light bulb go off in my head and thought, wow, maybe I can get a part too. So be quiet, stay in the background, don't try to get in every scene, don't worry about being seen. Stay the extras in the holding area. Bring your chase lounge chair. Bring some snacks. Bring some something to drink, not alcohol. Uh, a friend of mine, Dale, he got in trouble because he used to drink beer when he was waiting, and they found out and they fired him. Don't go to work drunk or stoned. Don't smoke pot. If you smoke cigarettes, go in the right area. And don't be bothering people or asking a bunch of questions. Do what you're told. You know the old saying, be a good listener. But getting back to survival, it's very expensive to live in LA now. And like I said, apartments, you have to do first and last, and security deposit, and then you have to pay your rent every month. If you get behind on your rent, Remember, they're not going to kick you out right away. They have to go through the eviction process. So it might take them six months before you could throw, they could throw you out and go move to another apartment building. There's a lot of apartment buildings, or at least there used to be. I own a condo now, but I've been in the same little house, a bungalow, uh, over in uh, West Hollywood near um, uh, Whole Foods for 14 years and they can't jack the rent up because it's on um, it's on um, uh, what's it called uh, where they can't raise your rent, rent only a small amount what is that called rent control what rent control rent control um, I don't know it's not working so we're done <laughs>